Job Talk Tech Tips are brought to you by SNS. Proven performance for the power sports industry. Hey, this is Chris with CycleSource Greasing Gears TV, and we're back in the shop today working on our Chopper Friends throwdown frame. Um, you can see it here in its tacked up and nearly finished state, but we're going to go all the way back today to bending tubing. From doing our tests, we know each one of the pieces, how much material we need, so we're just going to start with that. Cut the material for the down tubes, cut the material for the lower frame rails, and get ready to go to the bender. You have to watch whenever you're doing this to never go past three quarters, or not three quarters, but less than half. You want to wrap around because if you do, that thing has a tendency to want to grab a hold of you and twist your arms up, and it doesn't care if you scream and bleed and all that shit. Okay, one. Ah, ah, ah. So I have all of my instructions for the uh, bends we're going to do. In this case, it's the same flat broke chopper frame that we do with the uh, wishbone style tubes. I have all my bend instructions, you know, in the sequence that I'm doing everything written down. So we'll put this over here so we can follow along with it as we go. This is my first step, the way I do it anyway. And put all of your measurements, indicate all your measurements along the tubing. 12 inches, 4 inches, 19 inches. Now, since these are hopefully going to be identical, just opposite, I'm going to make the same marks. Great little trick that Will Ramsey taught me. Little piece of uh, tubing that has the same ID as the OD of the tubing we're working with. This is a great way to transfer your marks around the radius. Now the reason this is important is as we move down the tubing for the different bends we'll be doing, some of them are 90 degrees, some of them are 180 degrees off center. So you don't want to have to screw around when you get to that point. It's just as easy to do it right off the rip and have them the whole way around the tubing from the beginning. Before more experienced guys say, well, what you need is a digital angle finder. I have a digital angle finder. Still kind of a pain in the ass. So what I'm going to do is put it in this follow block that we'll be doing the bends with. And I'm going to make a line down both sides. And that literally gives me the ability to come up there, go, okay, there's my line, make my first bend, 180 degrees, make my second bend. That's where the wishbone comes from. One over three die, one inch follow block. Basically, the deal with this is the material goes in, lock it into place. You have a start line. This holds the pressure on it. Back here, we have a degree indicator so that as we're adding degrees to our tubing you can see exactly where it's at now the biggest thing you have to figure out while doing this is there is a plus or minus factor um, tubing any material depending on what you have as you bend it it has what they call spring back so what we've determined in our use of this one inch dom tubing it has a two degree spring back so you'll have to figure that out as you go so we're going to start with our wishbone I'm on my center line with my indicated mark for my first bend I'm tightening it up get our follow block in place lock it in place and from zero the book tells me bend to 16 degrees Mittler Brothers hydraulic bender amazing amazing piece of equipment i can't say enough about this tool um i've used a variety of different pipe kinkers and you know shit that's supposed to work well the big manual ones and all that stuff this thing is just worth its weight in gold worth every single penny check out mittler brothers american made tools for american workers 16 degrees here we go Okay, so set up for our second bend here, but I'll show you guys the importance for setting up those, um, those center lines ahead of time. The second bend, we're going to rotate now 180 degrees, and you can see here 
why those lines are important is rather than sit there and you know try to with one hand hold the tubing and the other hand hold the degree finder we can just go to our other center line 180 degrees opposed so second uh, bend is happening at 23 degrees so literally like i said the two degree spring back we're going to we're looking for 21 but we're going to 23 to achieve it There's the beginning of our, our wishbone. We're going to start with the right side. So coming down to my same established center line, which is pretty dope. Now I know if I, lo if I just lightly lock this into place here, I need to rotate 90 degrees off of this. So this is where you can use a tool like the digital angle finder. So I'm at zero there. I'm going to make a mark. And I'm going to rotate that to 90 degrees. I'm going to make another mark. Significance of that mark, since I've transferred it to the outside, is I'll be able to roll that 90 degree mark to whatever position I need on both sides of this follow block. And it's going to give me the, the 90 to do the next bend. So since we're doing the right side, the left, it, it veers into the left. Our 90 is going to be down. Rotate it until my 90 mark is... In line with my follow block. I'm on my line. I'm on my 90. Okay, 44 degrees. Before I unlock this, I'm actually gonna establish that center line because the next bend happens on the same center line. Last bend is 38 degrees on the same center. So, if our math is right and everything's good, this is the payoff. dude that's what's up right there okay that's all the time we're going to have for today um, next episode when we come back we're going to get into using the notcher and show you how to fit this stuff together we're also going to bend our lower and upper rear frame rails until then uh, be sure to check out our youtube page for more of this content i'm chris with cycle source magazine's greasing gears tv